Welcome back to the Zonal Statistics Tutorial. Um, so, so far we've set things up to be able to create a raster that holds the location of our vector polygons so we can then compare where the polygons are to where the raster values are and then get our statistics. So, in the last video we created the offsets that show where, uh, where the raster locations are in the array. Um, and now we're going to actually rasterize our feature, our polygon feature, to overlay on that. Okay, so I want to do just a hair little bit of cleanup, and I'm going to get rid of print offsets here. We don't need that anymore. Okay, and I'm going to hit an enter because that needs to be at the very end of the loop. The get next feature should be the very last thing that happens. Okay. Good deal. So now what we need to do is we have our offsets. Now we need to create a new geotransform for our um, for for our poly for our rasterized polygon. Okay. Um, and so we are going to do that now, and we're actually going to make a function that does this. Okay. Um, so we're going to make one that does a geotransform from offsets. Um, and we'll add that up here. And that way we don't have all this code in our loop. And so we're going to do def um, new got. Well, let's just call it got from offsets. Got from offsets. Okay. And we need to give it our row offset um, the column offset and the old geo transform okay so let's uh, get that and we're going to return a new geo transform and so let's just set this up and our new geo transform is going to be a list. So it's going to be a new got. I'm going to make that a list. And if you remember with our geo transforms, the first thing in that list is going to be our x coordinate, which is given by got0, the old got. We want to add the column offset. We want to multiply it by the cell width. Okay. Um, our cell height is going to be the same as the cell height uh, in the original geo transform. The next one is a skew factor. We're just going to leave it the same, which is the default zero. Um, then the next one is going to be our uh, y top left y coordinate. So here we're going to have uh, the, oops, I think this should be a plus sign. Sorry, and this should be a plus sign. That's going to be the original or the row offset multiplied by the cell width, or cell height, which is GOT5. And then we have another skew factor, and we're going to just leave that at the default, which is 0. And then our cell height is going to stay the same. Okay, And so that's the, G, the new geo transform that we're going to return. So we can come down here. And let's do new got equals got from, I think it was, what did I call it? From offsets. Okay, and then we're going to need to pass in our parameters to it. And our parameters, we want to give it the starting row and the starting column. It's going to be offsets 0. Offsets to and the geotransform. All right, so that will give us the new geotransform 
for the new raster. All right, so now we're going to create a new raster in memory that we can store our rasterized polygon in. And the way we do that is we're going to call this um, our, I think we want to call it, it's going to be a temporary raster. Whoops, my apologies for that. Let's just see what we called our previous one. So we have a RDS, and if you were going to call this a TRDS, and it's going to equal, um, this we're going to create the new raster. So we're going to use, we have to create a driver um, to do this, actually. So we'll create a driver here in just a sec. So let's come up and we created our memory driver for OGR here. We're going to create another memory driver. We'll call it GDAL, mem driver GDAL. It's going to equal GDAL.get driver by name. And we're going to give it memory. Let me just double check that. That might actually be mem with GDAL. I'll just double check that and let you know. Okay, so I think we want to use MEM like that. And if that's not right, we will figure it out soon enough. Okay, so now we want to create our raster data source. And so here we're going to call this, or what did I name that? Mem driver GDAL. Is that right? Yep, mem driver GDAL. And then we need to pass in some things here. So we need to pass in a file name, which is going to be empty because we do, we're doing this in memory. We need the columns and the rows and the data type and the number of bands. Okay. Um, and so I'm just going to type these in. So we're going to do calls rows, bands, data type. And these are not the correct things to put in there. I'm just putting in there so we don't forget what they are. We're going to go back um, and put these in as they should be. So the number of columns is going to be offsets 3 minus offsets 2. Okay, so that will give us our columns. I'm going to put these all on new lines so we can see it more clearly. Okay, and I'm actually going to put this one on a new line too. Okay, we got that. We need our rows. We need our bands. And we need the data type. Okay, so the number of rows is going to be Um, oh, excuse me. Sorry, I lost my lost my head there for a second. Offsets one minus offsets zero. And so what we're doing here is we're taking the the maximum column minus the minimum column, which will give us the number of columns. The maximum row minus the minimum row, which gives us the number of rows. There's going to be one band, and the data type is going to be byte. Um, it takes the least amount of memory, and we're just going to have a single integer in here. So we can do gdal.gdt, oops, gdt byte. Okay, so it's a gdal data type. So that will create our new um, gdal data set. Now we have not yet assigned a geotransform to it. So that is what we're going to do here. And so we're going to do trds.set geotransform. And we want to give it the new geotransform. Okay, so now we've just given it that new geotransform. We've given it a size that corresponds um, to that. And so we're good to go. We have that raster all ready to go. Cool. Now we can rasterize the layer. And this is actually pretty simple. If we're going to do GDAL dot rasterize layer. Okay, and then we need to pass in some parameters. So the first thing we're going to pass in is the layer to save the rasterization to, which is going to be our TRDS. We're going to give it 
a value, which is going to be over a list of values. We're going to give it one. Okay. We're going to give it the layer two rasterize, which is going to be our temporary layer, temporary polygon layer, TPLIR. We're going to give it burn values. And this is just to make sure we get a value of one um, where the polygon is, has a positive value. All right. So there you have it. It's that simple to rasterize a layer. Um, now we're going to have the rasterized version of TPLYR, and it's going to be saved in TRDS. Okay. And let's go ahead, and we want to get the array of this. When we do this, we're going to call this, we'll call it TR array equals TRDS dot read as array. Okay, so there we have it. We now have the array that will tell us where the polygon is located. Now, let's do something else here. Let's go ahead and get the raster values from the array. And so we're going to do array. We're going to call this or we're going to call this R array. That's our raster array. And that's going to be rds.get raster band one. We'll get the first raster band dot read as array. Okay. And so now we're going to give it some offsets to read from. Okay. So we're going to tell it where to start. And we're going to tell it how many columns and rows to read. Okay. So the first thing you're going to do is give it a starting X offset, which is going to be our minimum column, which is offsets two. Okay, I'm going to, let's come over here, I'm going to do a backslash ender so we can put these on different lines. Okay, and then we want to give it the um, starting Y, which is going to be um, the, the row. So we're going to give it our, our minimum row, which is going to be offsets zero. Oh, I might have to do a backslash there. So comma, backslash, enter. And then we need to give it the number of columns to read. which is going to be offsets three minus offsets two. Give it a backslash or a comma, then a backslash, enter. And then we need to give it the number of rows to read, which is going to be offsets one minus offsets zero. Okay, and so that will just read a chunk of that original array. Okay, now let's do it. Let's print out a couple things here just to uh, show you what this might look like. Okay, so let's do print. Um, Polygon, let's do rasterized size, and that's going to be tr array dot shape. So I'll give you the shape, the number of rows and columns there. Let's go print raster shape. We're going to print r array dot shape. Now these two should be the same, okay? And now let's go print rasterized sum. So it's going to be the number of grid cells in that raster that represent the polygon. And we're going to do, um, oh, what we need to do, we could try to, let's see if this works, traray.sum. I'm not sure if that'll work or not. And let's do print raster sum. Um, and this will be r array dot sum. We might need to import NumPy in order to do this, and if we do, we'll do it, but we'll try it like this for now and see if that works. So I'm gonna go ahead and click save, and then I'm gonna click run, and we'll see where we're at. And we have invalid syntax. I'm not sure why it gives me that error. Hold on just a second here. And the reason we have a problem is I forgot to close the parentheses here. 
So now let's give that a try and click run. Okay, and I have another error. Let's see what that is. Um, it says line 60, driver object is not callable. Hold on, give me just a sec here. Okay, so I see what the problem here is. And I forgot to do something. So we're on, it says line 60, which is the end of the statement here. We really need to go up to where it says TRDS equals mem driver GDAL. And I forgot to call the function that does this. So we need to do dot create. So we need to use that driver to create a GDAL data set. Okay, so now I'm going to clean this up a little so we can see what's going on. I'm going to hit an enter here and an enter here so we can see that's a, a statement by itself. And I'm going to do the same thing down here. I'm going to put an enter here and an enter here. Okay, so there we have it. Okay, let me go ahead and click run again and hopefully we get this cleaned up. Okay, all right, so here we go. Let's take a look here. So our rasterized sum, you can see, our rasterized size is 244 by 244. So that's the, that's the square that these have in common. Um, you can see our rasterized sum that there are about 40,000, 39,000 pixels or grid cells uh, in the raster represented polygon. If we sum the raster, we can see all the elevations in there sum up to a really big number, 151 million, almost 152 million, okay? And then you can see for the next one, it's a bigger one, it has a bigger area, uh, it has more pixels representing that shape, and we get a bigger sum uh, for the elevation values. Okay, so we're going to stop this video here, and before all this code is going to be on opensourceoptions.com, I'll include a link in the description once I get that up. Um, in the next video, we're going to go through and we're going to come, we're going to pull out the grid cells that correspond um, from the polygon because not all of these 244 by 244 grid cells correspond to a, a location in the polygon. Only the ones that have a value of one in them. Okay, and so we're going to go ahead and we'll do that in the next video. Thanks for watching.